On the morning of August 4th, 1914, the German cavalry crossed the border into Belgium. Facing them was an army of the last century. The small Belgian force was poorly equipped. Now they face the world's mightiest army, one ten times their size. The Belgians could have allowed Germany to pass through their territory. Instead, they chose to fight. Belgium's only hope rested with the forts ringing the gateway city of Liège. This complex of underground fortresses was considered one of the strongest positions in Europe. But the German army had planned for the forts and unveiled a secret weapon, Big Bertha, the world's largest cannon. Concrete forts, once thought impregnable, collapsed from Big Bertha's one-ton shells. Some Belgian soldiers went mad in anticipation of the next explosion. Others swore they would fight to the last man. The fort is now in ruins. We are in complete darkness and scarcely able to breathe on account of the poisonous and noxious gases. A truce bearer demanded the surrender of the fort. We prefer dying to surrendering. The Belgian commander was knocked senseless in the final bombardment. He awoke a prisoner of the Germans. I was taken unconscious, he told his captors. Be sure to put that in your dispatches. The German army began flooding across the Belgian plains. They expected no further resistance. But to their surprise, Belgian snipers, known as Franck Tireur, started shooting. Warfare in Belgium soon became a hideous experience because the population took part in the fight. Fritz Nagel was a frightened German soldier he saw the fear of those around him turn into acts of reprisal against innocent civilians. Unless they shot first, nobody knew where the enemy was. Whenever they had the chance, they shot down German soldiers. There was little defense against that sort of warfare because the streets were full of civilians and so were the houses. It was nerve-wracking in the extreme and resulted in savage and merciless slaughter at the slightest provocation. As we marched towards Louvain, frightened civilians lined the streets, hands held high as a sign of surrender. To see those frightened men, women, and children 